No one in Britain who is willing to work will ever again suffer absolute want. The post-war welfare system made preventing destitution the responsibility of the state. And only a scheme like this can afford you such high benefits. Come on now, it's worth it, isn't it? Every penny of it. Now, a new welfare revolution is underway, shifting greater responsibility back to the individual and changing lives in the process. People are killing themselves over this, you know. I don't know where to go from here, I'm lost. Why is this going on? In this Line 18 special, we speak to those claiming universal credit, the professionals grappling with the system, and the new data that reveals its impact on debt, evictions, and hunger. Hi, my name's Joe Cahill. I'm calling from the Specialist Welfare Advice Team at New Charter. Did you, Hi. Hey, did you receive our letter regarding universal credit? No. One morning in March, things changed in this area of Greater Manchester. The universal credit rollout arrived in Tameside. The New Charter Housing Association knows what that means. Of their tenants already on the new system, 85% are in rent arrears. With around 5,000 more of their Tameside tenants now about to be moved on to it, they need to get prepared. We've identified who is going to be affected and we'll go through a needs assessment and we'll then identify anything like if they've got debt, if they've got um, no internet, they've got no passports, things like that. I'll go this way. By design, all new claimants will face a minimum of five weeks without payment but that could potentially be much longer if they have problems completing the online application process. And so rent arrears can build up, and with that comes the risk of eviction. Denise McIntyre fears that is exactly what is going to happen to her. She's a grandmother and with serious respiratory problems is unable to work. But when she's moved on to the new system, she too will face at least a month before her claim is paid. I worry that I'm going to end up on the street with nothing. I really do. While advance loans are available, the fact she already has accumulated debts means she doesn't want to take on more. It's just upsetting, you know what I mean? I did work. I know, I know. But the government don't care. They don't listen to people. They don't. And the offer from New Charter to assist with food parcels is more upsetting than reassuring. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll finish it before I get to the point where I've got to go and ask but there is help. for food. You know, the, there are people who are, you, you know, <coughs> you're speaking to Joe today. Yeah, yeah. But I can go to Joe and say, look, Joe, I've got no food. I need help food. I couldn't do that. I couldn't lower myself to do that. But is that the kind of thing you're hearing a lot of? They are so proud and they, they don't want to ring up and ask for help. They've nev they never have done, um, and obviously when we're now knocking on the door and we're advising that we can help and they're seeing this face-to-face -face contact, they're opening up to us. Universal Credit merges a number of separate benefits into one. Like a wage, it's calculated on how much you've worked and paid monthly in arrears, not up front. And to encourage people to manage their own finances, housing benefit is paid direct to them. But in practice, that's causing serious problems. In a survey of housing associations, the National Housing Federation found that across the country, 73% of tenants on universal credit were in significant rent arrears, compared to 29% in areas still using the previous benefit system. Also provided to Sky News were interim findings from a survey conducted by the Residential Landlords Association. They found 62% of private landlords are now unwilling to rent to universal credit claimants. And amongst those landlords that are renting to universal credit claimants, almost a third said they'd evicted a tenant on the new benefit in the last 12 months. In more than three quarters of those cases, this was as a result of rent arrears. Joe Beck manages 350 rental properties across Greater Manchester and sees these issues daily. All of a sudden, a large amount of money is going into their account and they're expected to make sure that the rent's paid every, ta every month on time. And Common sense tells you that should happen, no problems, but no, it doesn't. <laughs> and dealing with the fallout of benefit changes 
has changed his job. I'm not a letting agent. I might, might say that on my business card, but no, we're a social workers. We're citizen advice bureau for you know tenants like our mother landlords. We're a crash sometimes for when they bring the kids here. So no, no, no. We're more than just letting agents, and you have to be. You have to. You have to do that. If you don't adapt, if you don't, if you're just black and white with it and say you've not paid your rent, you're evicted, then you, you might as well just shut the shutters and close the shop. The real revolutionary impact of universal credit isn't its intention to simplify the system or ensure that work always pays more than benefits. The revolution is in the way it redefines the very purpose of welfare to being to tackle worklessness, treating it as a behavioural problem, an attitude that the system is designed to change. The government say the system is succeeding in its aims, with people moving into work more quickly and staying in work for longer. But Charlotte Hughes isn't persuaded. For four years, she's held a weekly demo outside Ashton Job Centre, giving out food and advice to people she believes are being utterly failed by the state. As long as the universal credit exists, we will still have to be here to pick up the pieces, all right? We see some horrible things. Um, people are literally starving. People we used to see in the early days committing suicide, you know, uh, police officers telling us that you won't see this person anymore because they, they committed suicide last week. I still cry when I know about this gentleman that I used to know every week that I used to speak to, you know. And why is this going on? While we were filming, a young man approached who'd been sleeping rough. I'm so sorry. Have you got a tent or anything? Yeah. How old are you, by the asking? 19. <laughs> so sorry. So, so sorry. Come in and get warm, come on. Come put your stuff down and have a warm. Do you want some warm food? I bet you've not ate for a long time, have you? Not really. So, we've got 19 year old ch young men and young women are homeless and they, fall, they can't get housing because there's no. They can't get housing because they've got to have a shared room thing. and. You can't get a shared room. How can you come up with a deposit for that? And we don't have families. I don't have a family. This gentleman doesn't have a family. I've not got an address. I've not got a bank account. I've not even got ID. <sighs> you see, they expect people to have all those things. How can you get a bank account without ID? You know? How can they do how can you do that? It's just impossible, isn't it? That people like this lovely young man are falling through the cracks of the system. Right, don't Tent, don't camp out in the middle of town, please. No, I know. You're going to be so vulnerable. Ryan Abrahams is 19. Not only has he been unable to find homelessness support, but when it comes to benefits, his circumstances mean he cannot even access the system, let alone make a claim. Everywhere I go, they tell me that I've been homeless for this long and I've managed to keep myself alive this long. So I mean, So, so, what? so I can last, so I can last a few more months on the streets, with, and they don't, they just don't get back to you after that. I've got no phone, I've got no access to internet. I can't search jobs online. I can't get my CV printed out because I've got not got the money to do so. I've not got any of the things that you needed for a job. I just, I don't know where to go from here. I'm lost. In nearby Oldham, full universal credit has been in place for more than a year. And the issues people here are facing suggest there are more than just teething problems. A traumatic experience in her past has left Joanne unable to work. Now the red eviction notices are piling up. She's already been transferred off her previous benefits, but is yet to successfully set up a new claim, meaning rent hasn't been sent to her landlord in months. If she's made homeless, she could lose the custody of her son. My life has been turned upside down. I feel... I feel desperate. I feel it's horrible. And no one's listening. What kind of money are you living off a week at the moment? Nothing at the minute. Not 20 quid for food, not... No, nothing, I'm getting nothing. All my money's been stopped. So, and the only reason why I've got food at the minute is because my mum... The people are killing themselves over this, you know. Do you know that? There's, I know a few deaths, people, 
because they're in a raise with the housing, they're getting evicted, they're killing themselves. All universal credit. But it's not just people who can't work that are struggling. Even those in work are finding it hard to make ends meet. They're making it so difficult for single mums. <laughs> Tanya is employed as a carer. To make universal credit meet her needs and those of her four daughters, she's been told to work more hours. But that means additional childcare costs that she can't afford. So when the government says it's making sure that oh, work yeah. pays more than benefits? No, it's not. No, not at all. Nothing. My, my money's worse working than before. I feel like not working. That's how, it, that's how it is. I got more not working. Another key indicator of the impact of universal credit has been food bank use. New figures from the Trussell Trust show that, on average, food bank usage in areas where universal credit has been rolled out went up 52% in the first 12 months of the new system, four times higher than in areas where it's yet to be introduced. And it's here in the northwest that food bank demand is highest, with nearly 200,000 parcels given out last year across the region. In the Oldham Food Bank, they've seen a major increase in demand, with people in work but on universal credit now regularly among those relying on handouts to survive. This is the fifth time that Frank's been referred to the food bank. Just over a year ago, an injury prevented him from working. Now, despite being on universal credit, he cannot afford to eat. It feels as though um, I've been persecuted. Um, I've worked for 45 years, I've, play, I've paid my taxes for 45 years, my insurance for 45 years, and now when we further down the line, when I need assistance, they can only offer me limited assistance, and I don't think that's right. And without the food bank? Without the food bank, I wouldn't be here, I'd be dead, I'd be dead, dead of starvation. The sheer volume of complaints about the system has prompted some to urge the government to pause the universal credit rollout, but that has not happened. As a result of pressures, a number of changes have been made to universal credit. The claimant hotline no longer has any charges. 18 to 21 year olds are no longer exempt from the housing allowance. In some circumstances, landlords can have rent paid direct to them. And crucially, the minimum wait period between a claim and that first benefit payment coming through is being reduced from six weeks to five. The government say this shows they are listening. Critics say it simply shows the system isn't fit for purpose. In the end, the question of whether welfare is working depends on how you define its purpose. The government say that work is the best form of welfare, and with record levels of employment, they suggest it must be succeeding in its aims. But if the purpose of welfare is to ensure everyone, both in and out of work, is prevented from going hungry or losing the roof from over their heads, evidence is stacking up that something is going seriously wrong.